that we created this weekend. The first part happened to be corrupt, so it didn't work. So now I'm just making a quick introduction. Other than that, we're, it's almost ready to turn on and hopefully this next video will be having it turn on, hopefully driving so, but if you guys have any questions, just let me know, but peace, enjoy. Next, we kind of talked and researched about uh, when hooking up everything with the block up plate with the math. I want to do a little bit more research on this before we actually put on the block off. So we will see, maybe I've seen some pictures. I looked on Google images. I've seen a lot of people run it with just how the stock math is. So we're going to leave that for now but we're gonna move on right now we're mounting the manual boost gauge so we just have like the normal hallman one so we're kind of let me show you so we have a good mounting point so the when it's kind of uh how, how would i say it? it's like an l shape so the one going straight down this one hooks up to your turbo the compressor housing and then the one going the other way down hooks up to the wastegate and then this the top of the wastegate is at, um, back into the atmosphere so you don't need to worry about this but it's a simple setup and then you just kind of want the lines and stuff away from the fan and anywhere else to where they could get either burned or sucked into the fan so try to keep it simple and then next thing we're probably going to be is going to be the right here the line the vacuum line from the uh, fmu underneath the car so let me show you where we're going to tap into it it's going to be this little three port thing that's on the back of it what we're going to tap into is this one because it's like the line that's closest to what we got from the auto port store so it looks very similar and then we're gonna need to find a source for the blow off valve also. So that's what we're trying to look for. I don't know if we're gonna tap into that same one because you don't wanna tap into one specific one like and have so many lines coming from it. So I'll update you on when we get the blow off valve done on that. But with, with this one for sure, we're gonna be hooking, uh, teeing this one with that. All right, so a little update on how the vacuum lines came out. So you're going to need three T's. It's, it's kind of a mess right now, but I'm going to clean it up right now. I just wanted to show what it's going to look like. So three T's for this is going to be the FMU. This is going to be the, it was the stock one heading into the intake manifold. So whatever that goes into, then you need one from the intake manifold, this one to feed it, then one to connect it. And then this is gonna be the boost gauge. Uh, this is gonna be the blow off valve. This is the boost gauge. So yes, you wanna avoid making a lot, so many T's, but with this intake manifold, there's literally only one opening for it. I already had kind of place where the blow off valve is gonna be, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like somewhere like this with the intercooler piping. And then we just need to feed the boost gauge um, hose into the fire wall. And then another thing, we kind of like making this process faster is for the front mount we just happen to have a perfect bracket so it bolts right here and right here for a 10 and a 12 and it fits perfect honestly and with the piping with it it's gonna have pretty good structure and just with the bracket alone it has pretty good structure yes it's, it kind of moves a little bit but with the piping it's gonna be perfect and it just, we're, we're getting, we don't even need to cut the bumper. It just, it looks like it's supposed to be there. And so now we're probably going to just clean everything up as much as we possibly can right now. See with the wiring, how, with the gauges, and then uh, see with the intercooler piping, see if we get started with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, coming in coming yeah. In. Flex, I just want to win. Yeah. L.A. B.B. who we running with Yeah, 2, 2, 3, 3, I'm on 10 again Yeah, stay 
your name Big been dope on flame I just switched the lanes Damn, he did it again I just flipped the pain Stripping and dipping and bass Slab on everything Swimming, you sinking away Cause I got big rats hey everyone, so it's the next following day We kind of got really tired And I forgot to close off the video But we actually got a lot of done this session On working on the car Right here is gonna be the we finished all the front mount piping, so and we also got the blow off valve mounted on everything. It was pretty simple overall, just we wanted our main focus was not to trim or cut the bumper, which was actually made it a little bit more difficult fitting it on, but we, we did successfully do it. I would say personally, trim it a little bit around the edges on the outside just to make it more flush but it was we, we did get it to work how it was but it was just more of a pain in the ass same with the piping the piping did touch on so like right here you could kind of see on this side it touches right here but it doesn't touch right here which is which is kind of weird overall it wasn't too bad that extra piping that did make a difference was the three pieces that came with uh, the full kit. So we used that one and I believe another one, but overall the kit that came from eBay did work pretty well. There was an extra piping too that we made a custom kind of intake for, for that. So it just could have a filter for the turbo. So nothing gets in that. Another question that Go moving on to the gauges that I got on the other video was hooking up the AFR gauge. So with the AFR is just like any other gauge. Th this is going to be the setup right here with so it's going to be the oil pressure AFR and the boost. And I, this is just mounted on right now with the, um, the three stack pillar. But for the wiring, it's very simple. I have everything wired right now. It's kind of a mess all through here. But what I did was it's kind of hard to see, but I took off this, this plastic piece on the side, but fed it through this metal piece. Typically what I do all the time with my gauges is I hook it up to the stereo, the positive and, and negative. So whenever the stereo turns on, my gauges turn on, it just makes it overall. I, I feel like easier. That's less whenever, Every time you, you turn on the car, the radio turns on. So just that's when the gauges turn on. But I just fed the wires around this metal piece, hooked it up, spliced the, the positive and negative for each of the three gauges into the radio. Then now just we haven't turned on or turned on the power, but then they'll turn on exactly when the radio turns on or when you turn on the ignition, basically. But with the AFR, another thing, it's just a little bit more tedious because the wiring is is a little bit thicker than than all the other gauges it's um when you're plugging in the sensor so it's right oh right here it is actually so right here's the the back piece that hooks up to it uh, so there's two pieces this is the sensor piece and the other piece is the ground and power so they just hook up to the back of it but when feeding this one through, it is kind of a pain in the ass on this specific model because there's really not that many openings. But what we did was, right, ah, oh, you can't really see it, but we poked a hole through the, uh, the drive line. It's like a rubber piece. Here, let me show you kind of like where we fed it through. So we, we took off this little bracket and then the uh, windshield washer fluid and it's, it's gonna be down here. It's like a rubber garment that, that you can have to poke, poke a hole through. But right here's the, the wire right here. So we fed it through here. And then this sensor is gonna go behind the intake manifold. And which typically with the new AM gauges, they come with a bung on it with the sensor. And so what you're gonna have to do is take it to a muffler shop or somebody that works on exhaust and weld that bung onto the downpipe or the middle of the exhaust so that the O2 sensor can basically screw in. And then all you have to do is just feed that wire straight to the O2 sensor and then it just hooks right up. That's basically, it's simple, it's not, it's not too bad, but I'll kind of show when 
we're, we, we haven't welded it yet, but when I take it to, if we do take it to a welder or something like that, then I'll, I'll show you kind of like what, what it looks like. But other than that, it's kind of like the description of it. So this is probably gonna be it for today. So the only thing we need left is the feed, mounting 100% those gauges, and then putting on that bung for the wideband gauge. We're just waiting for the feed, some adapters that hook up to the uh, stock oil pressure gauge. So then it adapts the, we're, so we'll, we'll continue using the OEM uh, oil pressure gauge with the uh, aftermarket oil pressure gauge. And then we're gonna be feeding the turbo from that same, same spot. But other than that, that's basically it for today. I'll keep you guys updated. And if you guys have any other things that you want me to show you exactly, just let me know. But peace out, guys. Thanks.